The story of Anzac and Gallipoli is still an important part of Australia's national folklore. We all grew up with the tales of Jack of VC, Simpson and his donkey, stories of bravery under fire and mateship on the battlefield. But how much of that is fact and how much is fiction? Let's find some experts to tell us. And let's start with an easy one, one that everybody knows about Anzac. We landed at the wrong place, didn't we? It's a common misconception. In fact, the Anzacs landed pretty well right in the centre of the originally selected landing zone. For decades, people have tried to explain the failure of Gallipoli by blaming it on the Royal Navy. But the Royal Navy did land the troops in approximately the right spot. It was what happened after the landing where things went wrong. You say approximately the right spot. Wasn't it at the bottom of a cliff or something? It was always going to be at the bottom of a cliff, but the, the Navy's navigational methods in those days meant that they couldn't get any closer than the kilometre stretch of beach that they did land the troops on. We're told that the Australian soldiers at Gallipoli were natural fighting men, bushmen who are crack shots and great horsemen, but just how good were they really? Well, the reality was that they were, were not really a race of athletes, as they were sometimes called. The argument goes that even though they lived in the major towns, they knew what it was like to live in the bush because they went camping and they'd absorbed the values of the bush. Uh, the Australian troops were the best physical specimens that could be found, but they were mostly found in Australia's cities. A fine contingent of men, no, no doubt about that at all. Uh, and they did stand out alongside the, the British troops in Egypt. People noticed the difference in their, their bearing, their size and so on. But they were not good soldiers. At the outset, when they landed, they were actually very inexperienced amateurs. They had to learn in a very hard school. John Simpson Kirkpatrick and his donkey, whose name was Abdul, by the way. Although it turns out one of the greatest legends to Anzac may have a little bit more to it. Uh, there might have been several donkeys, and the Simpson story is a very confused one. So it's probable that Simpson did use several donkeys. Uh, he was British, not Australian, and certainly he, he, was, he brought men down from the heights who had been wounded, and he was killed quite early in the Gallipoli campaign. What about the claim that uh, Simpson saved dozens of lives, bringing them all down on the donkey's back? Probably untrue. He did very brave work. He went into the gullies, he rescued men who were wounded, but mostly men with leg wounds. He may not have actually saved a single soldier who was going to die, but he brought wounded men down. He did it under fire and it was very brave. But the legend grew way after that, and as one historian has written about him, um, he was far busier in death than he was in life. Tell us about the famous drip gun and some of the myths that have grown up around that little innovation. Yes, that was quite a clever improvisation. The idea was it would keep firing when the trenches had been evacuated, so water dripped from one container into another and tripped the trigger of the rifle. But I doubt that it really deceived the Turks. There's quite a bit of evidence from the Turkish side now that the much vaunted secret evacuation had not really deceived the Turks. The drip gun contributed nothing to the evacuation because by the time the first drip gun went off, all of the troops were evacuated. Where did these myths come from? The myths of Gallipoli started on the day of the landing and the war correspondence reports, the military reports, the histories. We've all got an in, an, a huge emotional investment in Gallipoli uh, and Australians want it to be an important story and a positive story. History isn't always that neat though. To some extent it doesn't really matter whether memories are absolutely accurate. Um, they acquire, they serve a, a function in people's lives. I think the creators of the legend were the men themselves. A lot of the myths that evolved around Anzac and Gallipoli did so for a very good reason. A national coping mechanism for what was undoubtedly a tragedy. And in a way, a lot of those myths have become a part of our history as well. For ABC Fact Check, I'm John Barron.